print is a built-in statement that prints whatever argument is passed to it. CHR dollar or charge is a built-in function that returns a string composed of the characters specified by the numerical parameter. 205.5 is a number that happens to be between the Petsky codes for the forward slash and backward slash when using the uppercase and graphics char set. Why? We'll see this in a moment. RD or random is a built in function which returns a number between 0 and 1 when called with a dummy value. When added to the previous 205.5, we get a number between 205.5 and 206.5. This number will get converted into an integer before being passed to chars, and that will produce either a slash or a backslash. The semicolon after print, which is a bit easy to miss, indicates that the cursor should remain after whatever is printed. The colon separates the statements on the same line. The next statement is GOTO10, so the execution flow will continue back at the beginning of the line, in an infinite loop. Now let's see the full version. Durex 4 doesn't come with PRNG facilities, so I had to write my own, which I will show in another video. Require LFSR will load my PRNG module and make it available to the rest of the program. Colon is a call word that tells Forth to switch to compile mode and creates a new word designated by whatever text follows it. In this case, it creates a new word called maze. The left parenthesis is a word which ignores all the text until the next right parenthesis. This is one of two ways of commenting code in Forth. In this particular case, it's being used for a stack comment. This is a way in which we can specify the effect that a word has on the stack. Not for Forth itself, mind you, but for the reader. Begin marks the start of the loop. Again, makes the loop an unconditional, or in other words, infinite loop. Coin will produce either a 0 or a 1. This M between quotes will produce 205, which is the code for the slash in the uppercase graphics char set, and plus will add those two values. Emit will display the character specified by whatever value is on the stack, and advance the cursor one position. Now, I'll make a small addition here. Key question mark will return true if a key has been pressed and false if it hasn't. If will take a value of the stack. If it's a zero, it will jump to the next then. If it's not zero, it will continue executing the code after it. So, if a key has been pressed, it will be read by key, it will be dropped off the stack and then exit will finish execution of the word. This is completely backwards from mostly any other language that you may know, but it makes sense considering how fourth code is laid out. <laughs> 